Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're really excited to teach you all about our sea turtles and manatees in Broward County. My name is Stephanie, and this is my friend Samantha. Hello. We're both natural resources specialists here at Broward County, and we're going to teach you a little bit about our programs. So, Samantha, why don't you start and kind of explain what you do at the county? Sure. Um, I manage the Marine Facility Operating License Program, uh, which all those fees that come from those licenses go back to our manatee protection plan. So whether we are up in helicopters looking for manatees in the waterway or talking with marina owners and boat owners about safety and the laws, um, it's basically a lot of education and getting a chance to talk to you guys. Yeah. Uh, and I run our sea turtle conservation program here at the county. So my team is out on the beach every single day before sunrise, before anybody else is out on the beach, and they're looking for new sea turtle nests on the beach. We mark them off, and I'll tell you a little bit more about our program a little bit later. So that's a little bit about what we do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start our PowerPoint and kind of give you a better idea about our programs. So here we go. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at any of those attachments. Um, we are going to do a activity at the end with a Venn diagram. So if you were unable to print that out um, and you've got a piece of paper and a pen, you can draw two big circles um, overlapping each other and we'll go through it at the end as well. But jot down any notes, anything interesting. Uh, if you're asking questions, we'll probably answer most of that stuff as we go through the program, but at the end, we always love um, interesting questions that you guys might have. Yeah. Okay. Is it ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. What is a natural resource? So we know that we work with an environmental planning um, division where we talk about all of the di different natural resources in the environment that are untouched by humans. So Florida, especially South Florida, we have a lot of really interesting ecosystems and uh, resources that we want to protect. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, for example, we've got our dunes, we have mangroves and wetlands and springs. Uh, even our sun is considered a natural resource where we can get solar energy. There you go. Okay. So as a specialist, what we want to do is take all that data that we study and research and manage to take care of those uh, natural resources and basically see how we can make things better for them and our community. So we have a water quality testing lab. They check the water that um, whether it's where the canals where manatees go or off the, the ocean uh, where the sea turtles are going to be coming up to lay their eggs. We actually have someone that studies beach sand, the actual size of the grains of sand, and that is what they like to do. Uh, it's very important to see how um, erosion and things are doing on the beach. Uh, and lastly, we go ahead and collect all that data. We give it back to our partners and to the community to explain what we're studying and how you guys can help us. Okay. So we'll start with manatees. We have. Um, our West Indian manatee, the one on the top right, that is our Florida manatee. That's the guy that lives here. Uh, they are from uh, the Am Amazon. We've got West African. The dugong is actually over in Asia. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have heard of the stellar sea cow. That is actually the past relative uh, discovered in the mid-1700s. Basically, it was a big, big, big guy. You could see he's twice the size, uh, about 8 to 10 tons. And within 30 years of discovering the stellar sea cow, um, it was hunted to extinction. So they could have used him for the hides, uh, the oil, the meat that comes from the fat, and um, even maybe possibly when they were hunting otters, um, that the sea urchins overgrew and ate all the seagrass that those stellar sea cows would have eaten. So a lot of different factors went to that extinction, um, but we no longer have them. So, uh, and Late 1800s, Florida became the first state uh, to come up with a protection plan for our Florida manatee and why we need to save them. So, uh, as I mentioned, um, that was the family of the siren, Sirenia. Um, so, siren is a, let's see, oops. <laughs> when they were first discovered um, back in the Christopher Columbus era, they thought that manatees were actually mermaids. Uh, they were unaware of what a manatee, dugong, sea cow, that whole family was. So they came up with the name Sirenia. It is one of our three classes of marine uh, mammals. So 
we have our sirenia, another marine mammal. Uh, we've got our whales, dolphins, and porpoises. So a lot of people think that manatees and whales and dolphins are the same family. Um, well, when it comes to their order, they are not because manatees do not have that blubber that whales and dolphins will. Uh, so manatees don't go into cold water. They can't go, I think 68 degrees is like their, the coldest that they want to go. While whales, they can go where it's a lot colder. We also have our furry carnivora uh, marine mammals. So if you're familiar, we've got otters, polar bears, seal, sea lions, and walruses. So um, we, we have river otters here, but we do not have polar bears or walruses in Florida. Too, too warm for them. Okay, so these are some of the, the differences I'm gonna talk about mammals. So keep some of these in mind because we're gonna talk about sea turtles later. So these might be some good hints. There we go. All right, mammals have hair. So you might see some glistening um, sparkles on top of manatees' backs when they're basking in the sun because they actually have little hairs that are collecting water droplets on their back. They've got whiskers on their face so they can go um, in murky waters and feel around for different sea grasses down there. They give live birth. They do not lay eggs. Uh, a mama manatee will have a baby that will stay with her uh, for about two years. They call those calves and see cows is the mom. Um, they also, oh, actually, I think I'm getting to that. They nurse their young. So you'll see the baby in that photo actually in the top right. That baby is nursing. They actually go and um, they'll nurse from their mom underneath the armpit of that flipper. So if you see that, that's a pretty remarkable sight that a lot of people don't get to see in the wild. They're warm blooded. As I said, they do not do well in those cold waters um, anyway, but they um, will go and migrate so that they can get to the warmer waters to keep um, healthy. This is an interesting one. Most mammals have two sets of teeth throughout their life. So even us, we have our baby teeth, then we get our adult teeth. Sometimes we get those wisdom teeth that pop through too. Um, but manatees have teeth in the backs, their molars, that continuously fall out as they start getting ground down uh, from all the sand and the seaweed, and then they'll keep growing back. So I'll, I'll talk back more about that one because it sounds pretty strange, but it's really cool. And they're vertebrates, they have a backbone. So if you guys are um, capable, go ahead and rub the back of your spine. You feel all the little bumps, that's your backbone. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, well, we can draw later, guys. Um, but yeah, so they're a vertebrate, that is a sign of being a mammal. And mammals breathe air, okay? You're more than welcome to try and hold your breath and see how long that will take you uh, until you, you give up. But <laughs> manatees, for the most part, they're, they're eating and they're lounging around. So if they're awake, they come up every three to five minutes. Um, but let's say you're waiting, you're looking, trying to find a manatee, it's possible that they're under there for about 20 minutes to hold their breath while they're resting. Oh, there's a big circle. All right, <laughs> so um, a really cool adaptation, which is something that these animals have adopted uh, through all this different time, uh, is their nostrils, which is the nose holes right there. So on the left, they're open. That means they came up to breathe air at the surface of the water. And right when they go down, they automatically close. So I like to say, if I jump into the water, I plug my nose because I'm really bad at that. Um, manatees don't have to do that. They don't have to even think about it. The second they go back under, their nostrils will close up like that. How big are manatees? Uh, well, there's three people right there. It takes a, quite a few people to lift and uh, measure them out. So 10 foot for an average adult, and a baby is about three to four feet at 70 pounds. So if you guys are in third grade, I'm sure some of you are about 70 pounds. Um, so they're really large. Uh, I call this uh, manatee anatomy, another few differences that might differ from sea turtles. And um, Well, let's see here. They have those whiskers we mentioned, and they have flippers. I don't know if you guys can see um, on the cartoon, but up close they go to the nails. Uh, so that's really interesting. They have about three up to four uh, nails on each flipper. You can see the shape of their tail is a paddle, and that top right, it shows another uh, example of how big manatees are compared to a full-size human being. 
Okay. I mentioned the flippers. Um, I would say let's go ahead and try and guess if you guys can see what the closest relative to a manatee is. Look at that foot. It's an elephant. So what? That's crazy. Kind of. Um, long time ago, manatees actually were on land uh, before they evolved to be a sea cow. Um, so you can see they actually, within the flipper, have those finger bones that are still there. Um, there's those little nails, and you can see how similar, along with that gray, tough skin, uh, to an elephant's foot. So we know elephants have trunks. Uh, manatees actually can use the front of their lips to go and pull um, grass off a golf course. They can pull down sea grapes and mangroves and all that yummy green vegetation that they like to eat uh, gets pulled on in kind of the same aspect that an elephant would use his trunk to stuff food in there. And one of my favorite pictures ever. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but now you'll never forget. All right, I mentioned those marching molars. So um, they don't really have teeth in the front, so it's not like they're going to go up and start you know, biting. Uh, they actually have to pull that vegetation into the back, and as they're grinding down all that seagrass on the bottom, they're bringing in sand. So it's just rubbing away at those teeth, and they actually fall out and move forward. So someone asked me, oh, is it like a shark? Sharks always have teeth that come in. Uh, kind of. I think sharks are a little all over the place, and they look like they really need braces because they're pointing all over the place and overlapping. And uh, these are mostly just in those back molars that are used for grinding down those greens. And speaking of greens, herbivores. Uh, we say about a thousand pound manatee will eat a hundred pounds of food a day. So all those greens right there, um, they, that's what they do. It doesn't have a lot of calories in it. They're a big animal that needs to have a lot of energy to at least keep moving and swimming around and sleep. Uh, it's a rough life. But that is about 50,000 Oreos in weight if we were to do that and to eat a uh, hundred pounds of food a day, give or take. So. Well, as a natural resource specialist, we have to go over what the threats are to manatees. Um, this is an example of habitat. It's the Port Everglades power plant. Manatees love to go there because it has that warm water that would come off of the power plant. Um, and so they actually even have a nursery area. You can see there's all those mangroves where it says manatee nursery area. That's where moms like to go and have their babies. Uh, it's very calm and quiet. We, there's no boats over that way. Um, but you can see that there's been a lot of co uh, construction and buildings for all the different uh, businesses and trading that goes on there. So the present manatee habitat is much smaller. That's the stuff in the orange. So we make sure that that is protected. Um, if any different types of construction need to happen, people that are certified can go out in a kayak and make sure that Nothing is happening um, around that area to protect the manatees. A sad one, but it's true. Uh, boat collisions with manatees, you'll see a lot of manatees with scars on their back. It's actually one of the ways that people will identify them that study manatees. Uh, it's not only the propellers sometimes. Uh, well, this picture is. This is what would happen. Um, you can see what it was before. But sometimes they'll even, um, if the boat hits on the side, their lungs might get injured, and that's uh, how they breathe, is with their lungs. So there's a lot of different ways that boats could harm manatees. Fishing line trash and litter. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this manatee with the life jacket that was floating around. Um, while it might not do the harm right away, as the manatee grows and gets bigger, it would be really restrictive and tight around him. So they have to rescue him to pull that life jacket off. Uh, and that's also an example from fishing line here. As the manatee gets bigger, those flippers, um, you know, they're going to get bigger because they're about a thousand some pound animals and it could amputate that um, limb, actually. And sometimes they, you'll see some manatees in rehab and the, um, at my, Miami Seaquarium and they might have, um, there might be missing a flipper. Pollution, this one, I know you guys are um, doing a lot of surf stuff. You don't want to go in that water. Manatees don't want to go in that water. Um, anything it doesn't want to go in that water so that's a turbidity barrier right there so if we ever have construction um, we want to make sure that the water isn't becoming turbid which means that it's getting murky like that but you can see all the stuff that's just 
flowing in and, and causing pollution. Um, take a moment, see if you guys can see the manatee. Um, and imagine you're going on a boat 25 miles per hour too. So I never, I couldn't see them. I only know this because my supervisor circled them many years ago, um, but they're there. So we always wanna make sure that our waters are clean so we can see better. Okay, so um, we learned a little bit about manatee anatomy. Uh, now we're going to talk about what we do to protect them on our end and ways that you guys can help too. Our manatee protection plan is one of the 13 counties that have one. You can see them all in green. Uh, when it is winter time, manatees come this way. Um, and you can see that we're down in the bottom, far right um, there, and they can go, when it's summertime, they'll go up to Texas, or they can go up to even Massachusetts, which is really far north. But this is basically where they like to come hang out for their uh, winter vacation. So for my specific job in the county, we do survey flights. Uh, we're very fortunate that we can go about once a week during season, which is November to March. Um, so season's just about ending, uh, but we can go over the waterways in Broward County. Sometimes we do Palm Beach. So if you guys are Palm Beach people, I can let you know what's up towards uh, Deerfield and Boca area. Um, but yeah, we go and we count manatees. We license those boat slips. Um, and fortunately, money is always involved with trying to um, put out more awareness and promotion. Um, so that's something that I monitor. We have about almost 500 different licenses for marinas. So I'll talk more about that. And education and outreach. So this is probably one of my favorite parts. Um, and we get to make really awesome graphics and signs to teach um, not only kids, but a lot of adults don't know what a manatee is either. So it's very important. Okay, so I just want to give you a heads up. This might be loud if you have headphones on, but this is actually probably how loud it is in a helicopter anyway. You have to wear a headset, so uh, just a heads up. I like this video because it shows um, we've had the ocean, which manatees will go to the edge of the sand there sometimes uh, to mate or just to swim through. Uh, they'll go through the intercoastal, which we saw those boats in the marinas there. I think this is actually Dania Beach, so it's a little south for you guys. Um, and then even in the canals on the other side. So while we're flying, if you know it might be windy, um, some people get air sick up there. I am okay so far. <laughs> um, it's okay, I get seasick if anything, but I can handle the helicopter. Um, but it, it's a lot going on. Um, but there's also giant airplanes that are flying through because we're by the airport, so it's a lot to keep in mind, um, but it's great. Uh, and then during season, so I'd say January, February is our colder months, you have lots of manatees that come to our warmer water refuges. So. Instead of us flying around for hours, we can take pictures and come back to the office, blow them up, try to like, use our you know, magnifying glass if we have to. Um, but some of them are hiding underneath the, the, the trees. Some of them are underneath each other. So this is just a rough estimate. Um, you know, I think the most we had this season was maybe close to four to 500. It wasn't, it wasn't that cold. So we didn't get too many. Um, so this must have been a really cold day because that's a lot. Okay, uh, we rolled out the I Spy a Manatee app. We're working with Google Play Store right now to get it back into the store, um, but Droid, or um, I'm sorry, Apple phones do have that available for free. It helps us because you can report manatee sightings, photos, or if one is injured, it pulls up the number for fish and wildlife, which is who you report to if you see an injured manatee. Uh, we'll talk about that too and share that number with you because sea turtles also use that number for rescue. We have a sheriff. He actually has a much better boat now, um, so I'll have to update this photo. But his job is to follow that red loop. I don't know if you guys can pull it up on your screen, but we've got what we call manatee loop. So as the manatees come through the port, uh, they'll basically go into where the quieter canals are so that they can go into um, the cooling lakes and areas where they will not be disturbed. There are still boats that go through those areas, and that's where our sheriff will go. and 
gently uh, educate others to slow down until um, if he does have to write him a ticket for another offense, he would. And this is why we do it, guys. This is Pop-Tart. He is so cute. Um, he was rescued and he was, I, I think it was only for a couple months. Um, he didn't have any new boat strikes, but he did have old scars. He, the best way to put it is he kind of had a stomach ache. Um, they knew he wasn't swimming with the other ones, kind of floating around. They did some tests. He was okay after he saw the veterinarian, so they released him um, over at George English Park in Fort Lauderdale. Um, but you can see we have so many different people that come together. One, they're really heavy, um, but it's great because you have law enforcement, um, the guy in the red shirt, the bald guy, that's my boss. Uh, so we've, we've got uh, Miami Seaquarium. Um, it's just amazing that we can have so many people that want to get these animals back into the wild after we help them. Um, so a few things that you guys can start doing to help uh, put litter in its proper place. So we know, I'm sure you're out there helping clean those beaches when you're out there. Um, we do our uh, coastal cleanup every uh, September. So if you guys want to come to Lauderdale by the Sea, that's my spot. And you get a t-shirt. Um, if you're a uh, fisherman or fisherwomen, and even if you find fishing lines stuck, sometimes they get caught up in the mangroves or um, you can recycle that stuff that never breaks down. It's always out there and it's not just manatees. It could be pelicans, sea turtles. Uh, so it's really helpful to spread the word that you can recycle that stuff at most boat ramps. And look, but don't touch. They are super sweet and slow and they probably would love a scratch because they've got barnacles growing on them. Um, but they can rub up against the, you know, docks and rocks and anything. Um, Giving your dog food at the table is equivalent to giving a manatee water from a hose on your boat. It teaches them that they can come up um, and get a treat when they don't need to. They actually, they don't need to go find fresh water all the time. They do it on their own. Um, so it's, it's actually um, illegal to touch them, um, but we do appreciate that you would, you know, want to watch from afar. And with that, I know I talked a lot, should we do some questions real yeah. quick on manatees? Yeah, let's do some questions. Here we go. So uh, I want to make sure we have lots of time for sea turtle stuff too. Oh, good. We got 20 new comments. Okay. Let's see if there's questions here. Oh, okay. thanks, Tony, for sharing the Venn diagram. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, if you guys want to keep jotting notes down on another piece of paper, um, you know, as we go along, remember we're going to talk about some differences and some similarities between manatees and sea turtles a little bit later. Uh, so let's see if anybody has, um, so somebody asked, where did you find these manatees? I'm guessing that was with the large photo, um, with all the, the different manatees. That one was outside of Port Everglades. Um, it's, it's protected. So, um, Broward County does not have places to go view manatees yet. We are working on an observation tower at Secret Woods Nature Center, but if you guys are more north, we actually have Manatee Lagoon and Riviera Beach. It's not part of Broward County, but that would be where I would say if you wanted to go and see them in, in a big um, spot like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Somebody asked, how many manatees have we saved? Oh. Um, well, you know, I personally, ha I've, go I've gone on two releases, one for Pop-Tart and one for Brownie. Um, I have not saved any. Um, what happens is if we see one that's injured from a helicopter, for the most part, we document where it is and send that to Fish and Wildlife. Um, we can go out and try to help, um, but it's not always a guarantee that they're going to be rescued that day. They're really crafty on getting away. Um, so if you know if they're if they're really ill and slow, it's easier to catch them. But um, sometimes, especially once there was one that had a bicycle tire around its belly, that guy kept getting away, and they just kept monitoring it. So. Yeah. Uh, somebody else asked one time they had a baby mm -hmm. manatee come up to them at the beach. Was it alone without its mom? Okay. That's interesting. Um, so depending on um, baby manatees will actually get parked. Uh, mom will go and find food and the baby will stay there. So it's not always that they're orphaned. We try to say keep an eye on it. Um, if mom doesn't come back for a couple hours, then you might want to call and say that there is an orphaned calf. But sometimes manatees look a little smaller, um, and, and it might just be a young juvenile. It might not be a baby. Uh, you can tell if they're really newborns, they'll be a darker shade of gray as well. Uh, so that's a good way to tell how old 
you know, how range if they're a newborn or not. Okay. Uh, so somebody asked how old manatees get. So uh, we have our, our longest living manatee in captivity was Snooty. He was in the um, Bradenton area in captivity till 69 years old, and he might have lived even a little longer. Um, but in the wild, 40 to 60 years old, depending on, you know, we, we have a lot of factors that go into those um, age ranges, depending on where they're at, um, if, you know, uh, different watercraft injuries and things that might affect it, or red tide, which we don't really have red tide on this coast, but it does affect a lot of them on the other side of Florida. Let's take one more manatee question. One more. Somebody asked, why do manatees not have top fins? I would, you know, you explain that? I can try. <laughs> so you, you see whales and dolphins that come to the top to breach, having that, um, that top fin helps them glide through the water if they're going to get prey. Um, the aerodynamics, I guess, is the best word I can put it. Yeah. Manatees aren't that agile, <laughs> so they don't need, um, you know, if you look at the tail difference too, um, dolphins have a different type of fluke paddle. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, we, I don't know if you guys can see me right now. Um, Let's see. Let's go to stop share and... Here's my manatee. Okay. So this is this is our manatee, and he kind of just goes like this. And dolphins, I feel like, would go like that, you know. So and they're doing more diving, and manatees just kind of float to get their air. They don't have to come up and blow and go back down really fast. So um, it's just the luxury of being slow, I guess. Yeah. Hydrodynamics. Okay. There we go. Um, so great questions, you guys. Thank you so much. If you have more questions, um, keep typing them in the chat box about manatees. We're going to move on to sea turtles next, um, but we will come back to questions at the end um, and answer any ones that we didn't cover so far. Okay, so keep typing them in the chat box. You guys have such great questions and we want to answer all of them, assuming that we have time. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start by telling you about our sea turtle conservation program next. And I like to explain to people that we're kind of like sea turtle detectives because we're out there on the beach and we have to figure out what happened without the turtles actually being there. We're out in the morning before, the, uh, before everybody's out there, but after all of our turtles have already come out. Um, so we have to be kind of like detectives and figure out what happened. And I'll show you uh, some of our evidence a little bit later and explain to you how we solve our sea turtle crimes of nesting. <laughs> There we go. So sea turtles are actually reptiles. That's uh, how they're different from manatees in one way is because they're reptiles. And let's talk a little bit about what characteristics reptiles share. Uh, reptiles are all cold-blooded or ectothermic, which means that their body temperature uh, depends on their surrounding environment. So if a sea turtle is in nice warm water, maybe, you know, 77, 78, 80 degrees, that sea turtle is nice and warm and nice and happy. But if that sea turtle is, uh, is in colder water, whoops, if it's in colder water, then maybe it's a little bit colder and a little bit slower and maybe not, not acting maybe like a sea turtle. So if turtles um, or other reptiles go in an environment that's too cold, that can be bad for them. Uh, let's see what else reptiles have in common. They all lay eggs. So sea turtles and all other reptiles have to lay their eggs in order to make more babies. And that's something that's also different from mammals. They don't have live birth. They have to lay their eggs, which then hatch into new little baby sea turtles. Reptiles and sea turtles have scales. If you look at that turtle on your screen there, you can see some of the scales on its flippers, uh, and you can see some of its scales on its shell. Those are called scoots. Um, so sea turtles have scales, unlike mammals, which have skin and hair all over their body, right? But one similarity between sea turtles and mammals that I just mentioned is that they both have flippers. Um, so sea turtles do have flippers, just like manatees, and that's how they power through the water so easily. Sea turtles also have lungs, and that means they breathe air. So that's another similarity between them and mammals or them and manatees. Uh, so just like manatees, they have to come up in order to take nice big breaths of air. Uh, sea turtles do the same thing. So they'll come up, depending on how active they are, take a nice big breath of air, and then hold it and then dive back down into the water. 
Uh, sea turtles are vertebrates, which means they also have a backbone. So that's another similarity between sea turtles and manatees. So I'm going to show you. I'm not sure. Um, let's do this. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys an example of a sea turtle shell right now. So you can see their backbone. So if you look on the inside of a turtle shell, you can see this bone right back here, and that's their backbone. So again, like we did before, I want you guys to all feel your back. And in the middle of your back, you can feel a backbone, your spine. And sea turtles have this too, um, which is pretty cool. So if you, uh, if you notice, this spine is actually attached to this turtle shell. So if the turtle um, were to lose its shell, that means that the turtle really couldn't survive anymore. So I don't know if you guys have seen cartoons where sea turtles or other turtles kind of take their shell off for a little break and then walk away from it. Sea turtles and really other turtles, they can't do that because their spine is part of their shell. But that's what makes them a vertebrate, just like you and me and just like manatees as well. So let's go back here. And... <laughs> All right. So I'm going to get back on here. All right, so sea turtles also live in the ocean, and that's why they're called sea turtles, right? So just like manatees, they can live in the ocean, really any salty water. Sometimes we'll see them in uh, canals and other inland bodies of water, but mostly they do live in the ocean. Um, so we call them marine reptiles because they live in the ocean. All right, so next I always like to explain why sea turtles are important for the ocean and for the world. So they do something called population control for certain, uh, certain things in the ocean. So that turtle in the bottom right hand corner of your screen is eating seagrass. And I think you guys were introduced to another animal in the ocean that eats seagrass as well. So that might be another similarity between them. But some of our sea turtles, you guys, are also herbivores, which means they eat nothing um, but seagrass and algae for their entire lives. Um, they don't eat any, any meat. So uh, they keep our seagrass beds nice and trim. Um, other sea turtles like to eat nothing but jellyfish their whole lives, like that turtle on the upper right-hand portion of your screen. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but I love to swim in the ocean. I love to dive. And I do not like diving with jellyfish because they have those stinging tentacles that can really hurt if you come into contact with them. Um, so our sea turtles are helping to control the jellyfish populations and to make sure that there's not a lot of jellyfish in the ocean. Um, they're also really important for overall ocean health. So if sea turtles are doing well, that means that our oceans are doing well and they're healthy. Um, but the opposite is also true. If the sea turtle populations are not doing so well, then that means that maybe our oceans aren't as healthy as we want them to be. And the oceans are really important for life on Earth in general. Uh, sea turtles are also really important for something called ecotourism. Uh, so ecotourism basically means that people, visitors, like to come to Florida to see our sea turtles. And they like to see them doing well, and they like to see them healthy. So people will go to places um, like rehabilitation centers where people take care of sick turtles and injured sea turtles, and they like to see them recovering. Um, other people like to come here to do programs where they can see hatchlings be released on the beach. We have those here in Broward. If you're interested, I can share that information with your teacher after uh, the webinar. I forgot to send you guys that last time, but I'll send that along as well. Um, so sea turtles really are very important for us. So let's talk about how many different types or species of sea turtles there are in the world. There's really only seven. And out of those seven, two of them don't even live near Florida or near the Atlantic Ocean. And that's the Australian flatback, which you guessed it, lives near <laughs> Australia in the Pacific Ocean. And then the olive ridley. Um, so we don't really see the two sea turtles on the bottom around Florida all that much. Uh, the five turtles that are left on your screen are ones that swim in Florida waters and are native to the Atlantic Ocean, which is our ocean um, just off our east coast. So out of these five, there are two that don't really nest in, uh, excuse me, in Florida a whole lot, and that's the Kemp's Ridley and the Hawksbill. Those turtles nest um, in other places and not really in Florida a whole lot. But the three that are left, the leatherback, loggerhead, and green turtle, do nest on Florida beaches quite often. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to introduce them to you one by one so you guys can get to know them a little bit better. So first, we're going to talk about our leatherback sea turtle. 
So this is the largest out of all the sea turtles in the whole entire world. They can reach about six feet long and weigh over 1,500 pounds, which is a huge sea turtle. So I don't know about you guys, but ask your parents later how tall they are. And I bet you most of your parents are probably between five and six feet tall. Maybe some of your parents are a little taller. They might be maybe a little over six feet tall, but these turtles are bigger than your parents. <laughs> um, they are huge and really, really cool. Um, so they call them the leatherback because they have a leathery shell. And you can kind of see it on this turtle, um, on this picture. It has a little bit of a different looking shell than the other sea turtles. It has those ridges on its back and you can see that its shell maybe looks a little bit different. And the shell is leathery because they've adapted, remember they've um, adopted this different this different characteristic to help them thrive in the wild. Um, so that leathery shell is an adaptation to help them dive really deep down in the ocean. And the reason they like to dive deep down is because they eat jellyfish. And the biggest jellyfish live really deep down in the ocean. Um, and these jellyfish have to eat a whole, these leatherbacks have to eat a whole lot of jellyfish um, to keep them nice and strong and to reach 1,500 pounds. So because they eat only jellyfish, they have another special adaptation in their mouths called papillae. And I actually think I might still be on the thumbnail here. Cool. So uh, can you guys all see me? Tony, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see our video right now? Can you see us in the video somewhere? Okay. So just the slide. Okay. So I'll stop the share so that you guys can see us. There we go. Give me a thumbs up if you can see us now. We good? Yay. Cool. Okay. So um, these le uh, leatherbacks, you guys, have another special adaptation in their mouth, the papillae, and it's these little spiky things. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that, but these little spiky things that line their throat, <laughs> and that keeps the jellyfish down in the, uh, the turtle's mouth so that it doesn't just slip out of their mouths because those jellyfish are really slippery and slimy. And if these turtles didn't have these papillae, those jellyfish would just float right back out of their mouths and they would never be able to eat them. Look at Lourdes is really intrigued. She's getting all, or they're getting, whoever's on that camera is getting you all up in the camera. That's great. So um, you guys, sea turtles are really, really cool. They have all these special adaptations that allow them to do these crazy things like eat jellyfish all day long, and that's really cool. So you can see this picture. That turtle has these papillae all down their throat, and it keeps those jellyfish in their mouths. It's really cool and kind of crazy and scary, but really cool because it's <laughs> science. Oh, no. So... Uh, these leatherbacks, you guys, like I said, they do nest on Florida beaches, and they start nesting here in March. Um, we had our first leatherback nest in about uh, late February this year, so it's not uncommon for us to see them in February as well. But you can see on your screen these turtles leave a giant mess on the beach for us to find. Um, so if you're out on the beach early in the morning and it looks like a big tractor trailer drove up out of the ocean and made a big mess on the beach, it could have been a leatherback nest. Um, so we'll talk about how we know it's a leatherback besides just the big old mess on the beach. Um, but that's what we look for out there. So next up, let's talk about our loggerhead sea turtles. Loggerheads are the smallest of all of Florida's nesting sea turtles, but they're still kind of a big turtle. They weigh uh, 300 pounds and they can be about three feet long. So maybe um, a little bit bigger than some of your younger brothers and sisters, <laughs> or maybe even about the size of you. I don't know. Um, <laughs> So they call them loggerheads because they have a gigantic head that some people say is as big as a log. Um, and the reason they have this big head is, I'm going to show you. So they have this big head like this. So this loggerhead turtle has such a big head. And the reason for that is because it's full of muscle in the back. So if we turn this skull around, you can see these two, um, these two big pockets right here. And those pockets are full of muscle and it powers this turtle's jaw to eat anything with a hard shell, maybe something like this conch, okay? This conch shell is super duper hard. Samantha, can you knock on the shell for me just to show them? Okay, ready? Oh, careful. Yeah. Maybe she needs to go to the doctor yeah. now because yeah. that was <laughs> really hard. So this turtle can chomp down yeah. on this conch and eat the little snail that lives inside of here. There's no snail in here anymore. 
Um, but normally there's a snail that lives inside of here, and these turtles like to eat the snail that lives in there. Um, so these turtles have to have that big shell because of these big pockets of muscle. And I do want to show you, since I have this up right now, um, the turtle's brain is in this little teeny tiny hole right back mm -hmm. here. So these turtles have really, really big heads full of muscle, but they have teeny tiny little brains. So unfortunately, these turtles are really bad at long division. Um, they, they can't balance their checkbooks, you guys, but they're really good at being turtles, okay? They're very instinctual, which means um, that they just kind of know what to do and what to eat out there in the wild. So they're really good at being turtles, but not so good at doing other things that, um, you know, like critical thinking, I guess is a good way to put it. Um, so again, these turtles like to eat anything with a hard shell, so conch, lobster, crab, they have a very uh, specialized diet. So they are carnivores, which means they eat meat. Whoops. All right, so our loggerhead turtles, guys, they start nesting right around April, and they are Florida's most common nesting sea turtle. So Florida, uh, we document tens of thousands of loggerhead turtle nests every single year. We are the number one spot in the world for loggerhead turtle nesting, and that makes Florida really, really special. And that's another reason why we need to protect these sea turtles, because they come here to nest, and we want to make sure that they have nesting habitat and they have the opportunity to nest here. All right, so last up we have our green sea turtles. So green sea turtles are our second biggest uh, turtle. They are four feet long and about 400 pounds. So that is still a pretty big turtle. And we call them the green sea turtle because they eat seagrass and algae as adults. So these are our herbivores of the sea turtle world. So because they eat well, I'll get to that in a second. So their, their mouths, again, I've been talking about special adaptations that these turtles have. Um, their mouth, their beak is adapted to eat seagrass. So if you look where that arrow is pointing, these turtles have little uh, serrations, kind of like if you guys see uh, a knife in your kitchen that has these little serrations. These turtles have beaks like that that help them to mow the seagrass mm -hmm. of the ocean. Um, so they have a special adaptation in their beak that allows them to eat the seagrass like they're doing there. Now, because they eat so much seagrass and algae in their lifetime, it actually turns their body fat on the inside green. It's not because they're green on the outside, why we call them green turtles. They're actually kind of brown on the outside, but it's because their body fat is green on the inside, okay, because they eat so much seagrass and algae, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> Um, these turtles start nesting in Florida right around June, so summertime. So if you guys have noticed, um, our sea turtles are here pretty much in the summertime, so kind of the opposite time that manatees are here. Manatees like to come here in the winter um, because they, they need the warmer waters, but sea turtles need it to be even warmer for their eggs to incubate or uh, grow in the sand before they can hatch, okay? So this is what our green sea turtle nest area looks like on the beach. They love to nest near uh, the trees and the grasses that grow uh, on the beaches. We don't really know why that is, but that's one clue for us that it could be a green turtle. Okay, so now I wanna tell you a little bit about what sea turtle biologists do and kind of what my team does um, here in Broward County. So during sea turtle nesting season for us, which is March 1st through October 31st, so it's literally almost the entire opposite of manatee <laughs> season. Manatee season is November through March. Um, so they kind of have opposite seasons in here, uh, down here. So our team is out there at sunrise, uh, a little before sunrise every single day. And you might see us on these vehicles out there um, looking for evidence of sea turtles. So we are literally out there, you guys, being sea turtle detectives. So now we're going to look at some evidence, and we're going to call this evidence crawls. So these are the tracks that sea turtles leave. So you guys know when you go to the beach and you leave footprints in the sand, sea turtles leave us flipper prints in the sand as well. Um, and that's how we know that they've been there. So we're going to go through each of these turtles, and I want all of you at home to pretend to be these sea turtles with us. Samantha, okay. <laughs> I mean, I I'll be the sea turtle with you guys. How's that? Okay. I, there's just not enough room. There's not enough room. We're, yeah. 
So we're going to look really closely at this first crawl, you guys. So the leatherback turtle crawl, first of all, it's gigantic. Second of all, you can see uh, that the turtle crawls with both of its flippers at the same time, okay? So I'm going to turn my camera on so you guys can all see me, and I want you guys to put your flippers out. And remember, we're going to be big sea turtles, so big flippers, okay? Put your flippers out. Everybody put you. your flippers out. We can see you, and we know <laughs> you're not putting your flippers out. So we are going to move both of our flippers at the same time to be leatherback turtles. So nice and slow because you're a big 1,500-pound sea turtle and you're crawling on land to lay your nest. Good job, everybody, being sea turtles. <laughs> cool. Okay, so now let's take another look at our crawls. So that's how we know if we have a leatherback turtle, okay? So nice big crawl, um, flipper marks at the same time. So now let's look at a different species, the loggerhead turtle. So this turtle is a little bit smaller and it has alternating flipper marks. So I'm gonna turn my camera back on again and we're all gonna be sea turtles again. So instead of putting big wide flippers out guys, because remember this is a smaller turtle, we're gonna do smaller flippers this time, okay? So everybody flippers up, small flippers. Good job. <laughs> and we're gonna crawl with alternating flipper strokes, okay? So you crawl with one flipper and then the other flipper. Good so job, kind of, Good job. So kind of like you guys are swimming uh, freestyle is what this is called. So we're crawling like loggerhead turtles, one flipper and then the other flipper. Good job, everybody. Okay, <laughs> let's look at our last sea turtle now and see how they crawl. So this is our green sea turtle crawl. So you can see this one looks a little similar to the leatherback turtle crawl because they crawl with both flippers at the same time, but this track is a little bit smaller than our leatherback track because these turtles, remember, are only about four feet or 400 pounds um, when they're fully grown. So I'm gonna turn my mm -hmm. screen off again and I want everybody's flippers to be up this time, okay? We're still gonna be small flippers because these are not as big as leatherbacks but we're gonna crawl with both flippers now at the same time for green sea turtles, okay? Good job, guys. Awesome, you guys are such great sea turtles. I think I'm gonna hire you to lay some sea turtle nests on our beaches this year. <laughs> Good job. So now that you guys know um, what we're looking for, we mark all of these nests. Um, once we see them on the beach, we know what species laid the nest. And we mark off that nest with uh, some stakes and some colorful ribbon and a big yellow sea turtle nest sign so that everybody knows not to disturb it, um, not to mess with it, because we want those baby turtles to hatch and be successful. Um, so typically, we see about 100 eggs per sea turtle nest. Uh, the eggs can be buried two feet deep in the sand or even deeper sometimes, depending on the size of the turtle. Uh, we know that one turtle can lay multiple nests in a season, sometimes up to seven nests in one single season from one turtle mama, which is crazy. So these turtles are doing a lot of work um, all summer long. The nests take about two months to hatch, so we leave them alone and we check on them every day, um, but they take about two months to hatch. And something kind of cool about sea turtles is that they return to the same area where they were hatched to lay their own nests. And this is something called natal homing. So sea turtles kind of have like an internal GPS. So you guys know the GPS that your parents maybe use on their phone to get you to a store you haven't been to yet on the other side of town. Sea turtles have that also, but it's inside their little teeny brains. So even though they can't do long division like you guys might be able to do, they can navigate the entire ocean and come back to the same area where they hatch to lay their own nest which is really cool and really crazy. Um, but that's what they do. And that's another part of their instincts. Really cool. So once the nests hatch, you guys, this is what the little babies look like. These are hatchling loggerhead turtles. Um, so they're teeny, teeny, tiny. They crawl out of the nest and hopefully go towards the water. And we look for their little tracks. That's more evidence that we can see out there on the beach. And another cool thing about sea turtles is that the sand temperature determines if the turtles are gonna be boy turtles or girl sea turtles. So I'm gonna to try to use my little marker here to show you. Yeah, let's, uh, let's try it out here. <laughs> so if you guys can see my marker, you can see that we have increasing temperature here. Let's not do yellow, because yellow is really light. Here we go. 
So increasing temperature down here at the bottom. So as the temperature gets warmer, our percent or the number of female turtles, girl turtles, goes up like this. And that's what this curve is showing us right here. So as the curve goes up in temperature, we get more girl turtles until we reach a point where there are 100% or all girl turtles. So here in Florida, it gets really warm in the summertime. Um, so we see a lot, of, a lot of girl sea turtles on our beaches. So to help you guys remember that as the temperature gets warmer, there are more girl turtles. And if it's cooler, we get more boy turtles. We like to say, da, 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 hot chicks and cool dudes. So remember, warmer sand temperatures give us more girl sea turtles and cooler temperatures, colder temperatures give us more boy sea turtles, okay? So we evaluate the nests, we dig them up and we count how many uh, eggs hatched and how many didn't hatch because sometimes that happens too. I wonder if I can clear my screen here. Clear, clear, done. All. Clear, all drawings, awesome. So we go in there, guys, we count all the eggs and maybe some that didn't hatch and sometimes that happens. Sometimes we find little babies that are stuck in the nest and didn't get the memo with their brothers and sisters. Um, so we take those turtles back to the office with us and we release them at nighttime when it's nice and safe and dark for them um, so they can find the ocean and join their families or swim out into the ocean by themselves because that's what they do. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about how you can help sea turtles, okay? So we've talked about sea turtles living out in the ocean, and specifically, sea turtles like to live out in sargassum seaweed. So this is that yellow or brown seaweed that you might see out in the ocean, um, and sea turtles like to live in it out in the open ocean. And unfortunately, there's also a lot of plastic in the ocean also. So these sea turtles are living in a sea of plastic, so we want to reduce the amount of plastic that we use, um, and here's a few ways that you can do that. You guys can use a re reusable grocery bag when you go to the store. You can use a metal or a bamboo straw or a silicone straw instead of a plastic straw, or just drink out of your cup with no straw if that's what you prefer. You guys can participate in a beach cleanup like Samantha explained as well. That helps our manatees and sea turtles and all sea life. Um, and you guys can use a reusable water bottle also instead of using plastic water bottles. You guys can also help sea turtles by not releasing your balloons. Now, I know balloons are super fun to have at your birthday parties, and if you want to have balloons, that's totally fine, but make sure you don't release them into the air when you're done with them. Because we live so close to the ocean, you guys, anything that we release into the air is probably going to end up in the ocean because balloons, what happens is when they get released into the air, they lose their helium, which keeps them floating, and they come down nice and slowly. Some of them might even burst into a bunch of different pieces, and they land in the ocean. And uh, floating balloons at the surface of the ocean with those strings hanging down from them look just like jellyfish to hungry sea turtles, okay? And remember, our sea turtles have teeny tiny brains, so they can't do division, and they can't tell the difference between a balloon and a jellyfish, or even a plastic bag and a jellyfish. So it's really important that we keep the oceans nice and clean for them so they don't eat something that they're not supposed to eat and then get really sick. We don't want that. So here's a fun little laundry list, too. Um, I talked about reusable shopping bags when you guys go grocery shopping. Um, and not releasing balloons. Samantha mentioned recycling fishing line earlier. That also helps our sea turtles because they can get tangled up in that stuff just like manatees can. It gets around their flippers and it can be really bad for them. Um, using refillable water bottles, participating in beach cleanups, skipping the straw. Um, please also remember to just look at sea turtles and don't touch them. Um, just like manatees, these sea turtles are a protected species which means that there's laws in place uh, that make it illegal for you to touch them if you aren't uh, a person who's permitted to do that. Um, and it's also not really great for those turtles. We don't want them to associate humans with positive contact, right? We don't need to snuggle our sea turtles like we snuggle our dogs and cats at home. Snuggle your pets, <laughs> not our sea turtles, okay? 
And lastly, we want you to educate others. If you guys have friends who couldn't be on the webinar with us today, um, we want you to teach them something that you learned today about sea turtles and manatees because we hope you guys learned a lot today. Um, so with that, we're going to pull out our Venn diagrams now. So if you guys were able to um, print out a copy of the Venn diagram, that's awesome. If not, go ahead and just take a second to get a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and draw these two overlapping circles, write sea turtles on one side and manatees um, on the other side in the circle. Um, so in the chat. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, so as you're drawing, <laughs> yes, um, yes. we're going to take a few questions about sea turtles. So let's see. Oh my goodness, you guys are... Just so we can try and catch up uh, in yeah. case any of these answers will help with your Venn diagram. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know we're there we go. Okay. okay, so let's see. Um, we answered what sea turtles eat. So remember you guys, some of our sea turtles out there are herbivores, which means they eat seagrass and algae. Other sea turtles are carnivores, which means they eat other animals. So our loggerheads, remember, like to eat conch and crab and lobster. So it depends on the sea turtles. Uh, let's see. Um, they live. Ooh, good one. So sea turtles, guys, can live, we think, to be into their hundreds. Um, so some studies have uh, documented the same sea turtle laying nests on the same beaches for 30 years. And for sea turtles, you guys, for them to lay their nests, they have to be mature. They have to be old enough to lay their nests. And for sea turtles, that means they have to be at least 20, 25, sometimes even 30 years old to start laying those nests. So if a sea turtle starts laying a nest, we know she has to be, we'll say, 20 years old. Uh, and then if those scientists are seeing that same sea turtle for 30 years after that, it means the turtle is 50 years old. Um, so we, we really do think sea turtles can live quite a long time if they're still laying nests at 50. I know there have been um, some turtles in captivity and they've had them there for many, many years and they think those turtles are probably in their 80s, you know, 85. So we think sea turtles can live a really long time. Um, so Crush from Finding Nemo was totally right. <laughs> Um, he was 150 dude and still going. Um, so we don't know about 150. We haven't gotten there yet, but maybe some turtles can live 150. We don't really know. Let's see here. What other questions do we have? So how can we save turtles from going extinct? We also talked about that too. So remember you guys um, use those reusable shopping bags. Um, try to get away from single use plastic things. Uh, we can recycle our fishing line, that helps too. Um, so we talked about a lot of ways we can help sea turtles from going extinct. Um, let's see here. Um, it's a lot, you guys had a lot. You guys have a lot of <laughs> questions. Yeah, we're trying to get to some that we didn't really, that we didn't really touch on yet. Um, so what time period do baby turtles come out of their shells? So remember, oh yeah, out of their <laughs> shells, out of their eggs. So remember we talked about it takes two months for those sea turtles to grow inside of their eggs and for them to hatch. And that usually happens at nighttime. So most sea turtle activity happens at nighttime when it's nice and dark and safe on the beach for them. So the hatchling sea turtles are waiting inside their nests underground until they can feel that the temperature has gotten a little bit cooler in the sand. So if you guys have ever been to the beach um, at nighttime, Samantha, you've been to the beach at nighttime, sure. haven't you? Mm -hmm. You know how the sand is a little bit cooler on your feet at night because the sun isn't shining? Mm -hmm. So the sea turtles, you guys, can feel that temperature change also. So when the turtles are crawling up out, remember, two feet deep in the, under the sand, when they're crawling up out of their nest, they can feel if the sand is cooler. And so if the sand is cooler, they know it's nighttime and that it's nice and safe. Now, sometimes it rains, which also makes the sand uh, a little cooler. Um, so if turtles are waiting to hatch um, and it rains, then maybe they'll come out if it's raining. But typically it's at nighttime. Good question. Um, let's see here. All right, cool. Let's. Yeah, we yeah. think, I uh, yeah, see a lot of That's trees. Good. That's yeah. great. Trees are good. <laughs> we love trees. But um, I think what we'll do, we'll move this up. And the easiest way that we found, we'll, we'll go through the chat, um, either I'll write or Stephanie will write. But let us know what you know um, about sea turtles, yeah. manatees, or both. 
it's really interesting to see what these two different animals have in common. So we're going to yeah. move our camera a little bit closer. Oh. We'll move our Venn diagram up here. So grab that Venn diagram if you guys printed one out. Um, this way. This way. <laughs> all right. We got all right. This. Cool. So can you guys all read it? I know it's a teeny bit glary, but we have um, sea turtles on this side and we have manatees on this side. So why don't you guys use the chat box and tell us some uh, similarities and differences that you learned today about sea turtles and manatees. So go ahead and type them, uh -huh. type them in the chat box for us, oh. and we'll go over them together. Well, I see that uh, Tony actually put a good one, that they both ha can be injured from boats. Oh, good one. Or other human activity. But that is something that, um, and you know what, before we get too into it, if you guys happen to see an injured animal, yeah. Whether sea turtle, manatee, shorebird, we have, you can text star FWC, all that information. Um, so you might see a boat strike on both either uh, a flipper, a shell uh, to the head, or on a manatee if it's a fresh wound. Uh, you'll want to report that because sometimes, uh, you know, people unfortunately don't see where they're going. Yeah. Um, all right, we got awesome. manatees. Wow, okay, yeah, you guys know, are all trying in the chat okay. box. We're going to try to keep up. <laughs> Here we go. Here. Okay. Um, um, how about they both need oxygen? Good one. With their lungs. Lungs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we have, oh, I'm done. Go ahead. Warm-blooded and cold-blooded. So Perfect. we have a difference with that. Whoops. Cold. And let's see, Maddox and Jazz both said the difference for that. Uh, so we have our warm-blooded mammals and cold-blooded awesome. reptiles. I almost wrote manatees. We already know they're manatees. Yeah, <laughs> that's easy to remember. Easy to remember. Manatee, man yeah. Um, let's see here. Augustine awesome. says that we have different seasons. So March to October, Good November job. to March. So well, I'm going to put summertime and wintertime, just so I don't have to write that. Yeah, then, <laughs> we're trying to keep up. You guys are so good. Um, all right. We've got Whitney here. Uh, flippers. Yes, you good are job. right. They both have flippers. They might be a little different looking, but they are still flippers nonetheless. Good job. All right. Uh, what is cold blood? I've got that. Ooh, backbone. Backbones. Good job. From Eden. But what, is, what do we call a backbone? For these animals, they are vertebrates. There we go. <laughs> I forgot I was the only one. Yeah. <laughs> so if someone gent so Carrie asked, if someone gently brushed a branch on a manatee, is it against the law? Okay. Well, you technically are not touching them, but you are um, going making them go out of their normal behavior. So it is a form of harassment. Um, and, you know, if if a manatee chooses to rub up against that branch or tree on his own. So be it. But as soon as you um, basically go into to interact with that manatee in, out of its natural state, that would be harassment. So, yeah, you we do not the recommend technicalities, but no, don't. We do don't that. recommend brushing branches against manatees, sea turtles, or any other protected species. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Rhonda mentioned that they're both vegetarians. Go ahead. This is an interesting one because we talked about that there's different types of sea turtles. Mm -hmm. uh, but as herbivores, they really um, could both yeah. be. Yeah, so guys, remember herbivores is a way that we describe animals who only eat um, plants and carnivores to describe animals that only eat meat, right? Mm -hmm. So vegetarians are humans who choose to eat only vegetables. So herbivores is the term we want to use for animals. But yeah, some of our sea turtles are herbivores just like manatees. Um, so we'll put that in the in the similarities column. All right. What else we got? Eden put manatees have hair. Good job. So that's one that sea turtles do not have. Sometimes they'll have algae growing on them, and they'll look like they have hair, but it's not. <laughs> um, okay, we got both live in salt water. Good job. So they are definitely, um, you know, not going into the lakes and ponds with the other freshwater creatures so much. Marine. Good. No shell and shell. Oh, that's that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> shell. So we both live on Earth. That's true. Khaleesi mentioned nails. 
So we did say that manatees have nails on their flippers, which is pretty interesting yeah. um, because we know that dolphins and whales do not. So that kind of shows the difference. Um, but Stephanie, I think you mentioned that on some sea turtles do have nails or claws, right? I didn't really talk about it today, you guys, but um, yeah, some sea turtles, um, especially the boy sea turtles, do have a little claw on their flipper and that helps them um, with mating. So sea turtles don't really have nails like manatees and humans have nails. Um, but I didn't really, I don't know if we're going down a rabbit hole here, but I'm going to write <laughs> claws for sea turtles. That's okay. Um, but one really interesting characteristic, if you don't mind me going off on a tangent for a sec, Samantha. All right. <laughs> so sea turtles, guys, I'm going to grab my shell again. So remember, um, we, I showed you the shell earlier and the backbone on the inside, but I'm going to show you the outside of the shell. So this is a green sea turtle shell. So these are the, uh, the scales I mentioned earlier on their shells are called scoots. And these scoots are actually covered in a thin layer of something called keratin. And keratin is also um, your fingernails. So your fingernails, your hair is also a keratin. Um, so even though sea turtles don't have nails, they do share um, a characteristic with some other mammals and vertebrates in, in keratin. So that's just kind of another similarity. So I'm going to write keratin up there. It's a protein, but um, so they don't have nails, but they have keratin. I just learned shell. a little more myself, so that's great. Keratin. Uh, going back to the shell, um, let's see. Eden mentioned that they both have a tail, which they kind do. of goes with the, the whole backbone thing, and yeah. put that on there. It's a good one. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, yeah. I want to see your Venn diagrams after we go through these, too. Yeah. Uh, it says manatees swim in murky and clear salt water. They do. Um, I, I think that depending on the waves, it all depends on the winds. I'm sure sea turtles mm -hmm. encounter some murky stuff, too. Yeah. So we talked about how they are both marine, so they both live in the ocean. And, yeah, sometimes conditions can be different depending on what's going on out there. So uh, Rhonda mentioned that they're both protected species, which Ooh, is good wonderful one. to bring up. Um, I'm running out of space. So <laughs> there are a lot of similarities. Um, so manatees used to be uh, on the endangered species list, and they are now moved to threatened because their populations have gone up, but they're still protected um, because they do have mortalities from human-related re activities as well. Um, and we do have different zones. We uh, here in the sanctuaries, um, we do, there's some more areas up in the springs uh, in northern Florida. And then uh, it's interesting because I guess for sea turtles, their protected sanctuaries would be when you rope off the nest, right? I yeah, mean, and there's also have... there's some protected um, protected ocean habitat as well. I don't I'd have to look at the maps. I don't know how close it is, but there's definitely some protected habitat in the ocean, and absolutely our nests are considered protected. Um, I saw somebody else wrote that um, turtles lay eggs, ah. um, so that's one big difference oh, between yeah. <laughs> turtles <laughs> and manatees, right? Uh, eggs. And then our manatees um, have live births, right? So that's a big oh, difference. Cool. Tony said that their, their class got to surf with a manatee in the last class. They, if you have video no and photos, <laughs> I, that'd be so cool to see. Cool. Uh, let's see. All right. Ooh, one. Um, so Holly Ooh. told us that one goes on land and the other doesn't. So that is a really good distinction. So um, I didn't get into it a whole lot, you guys, but sea turtles, um, yeah, the mama turtles are really the only ones who come up on land um, to lay their eggs. And that goes into them being reptiles and laying eggs. Those eggs have to be out of the water in order to grow properly. Um, so manatees don't really ever leave the water, mm -hmm. but sea turtles do sometimes have to leave the water like the mama turtles to lay eggs. Um, and also when they're hatchlings, they're already out on land and so they scurry down to the water, but that is another really good difference. Um, there was another question about predators and the shell um, for what predators what might go after sea turtles, which is interesting because you've got your hatchlings, your little guys, um, and then you have adult ones that could still be preyed upon. Mm -hmm. um, while she's writing, manatees don't have any natural predators. Uh, there is actually footage of alligators and manatees cohabitating, living together. They're, um, they're pretty much just there in the water. Sharks don't bother them. We actually see a lot of bull sharks outside of Port Everglades together. Um, and it's, it's 
terrifying to see how big these animals are together, but they don't bother each other. Yeah. Um, sea turtles, on the other hand, Stephanie. Yeah, yeah, guys, sea turtles do have quite a lot of predators when they're teeny tiny little hatchlings. Um, so just to give you a scale of size, here's my hand, and baby sea turtles are only about this big. So they can fit in my hand. So they're really teeny tiny. So that means a lot of things in the ocean can eat them, especially when they're that small. So things like birds and crabs, um, definitely a bunch of fish out in the ocean can eat sea turtles. Um, as they grow bigger, uh, they have less and less predators. So um, a sea turtle that's maybe, you know, this size of my, my green turtle shell here, um, maybe it has fewer predators, but maybe a shark could eat this turtle. Um, but luckily, sea turtles are really fast swimmers, and they're also really good at turning in the water, and sharks are not. <laughs> so a good, healthy sea turtle um, can very quickly outswim a shark, uh, but if a sea turtle is sick with something else, then maybe it's not as fast and it can't swim away as quickly. Um, adult sea turtles, only really, really big sharks will try to eat an adult sea turtle because they are so big and they're kind of hard to eat with that shell. Um, so sharks try to eat sea turtles kind of like a sandwich. So if this turtle's swimming around, the shark will try to eat it this way like a sandwich. But uh, these turtles are good at turning and the shark can't really uh, bite the shell uh, very easily on that turtle. Yeah, good questions. I mean, uh, the last one from Carrie, how much do sea turtles grow each year? Is, do you know? um, well, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think it kind of depends on how old they are. So smaller sea turtles grow quicker than big sea turtles. Um, so a hatchling sea turtle will grow to be, um, it, it'll grow a lot faster because it needs to grow bigger to have less predators. Um, but adult sea turtles don't grow as quickly because they don't really need to. Once they reach a certain size and they don't have a lot of predators, uh, they don't need to keep growing as fast to get big, so not very many things eat them. Yeah, good question. Um, so you guys did so awesome on this Venn diagram. I ran out of room because you guys had so many <laughs> yeah. good ideas. Um, so I hope you guys were following along with your Venn diagrams. So yeah, we'll move this back and then we'll put our camera um, back a little bit more so you guys can see both of us. Um, if you guys have any more questions, I think we still have a few more minutes. So if you guys please write any other questions in the chat box that you might have. Um, if you think of a question later, feel free to email it to Tony or email it to us and we'll get back to you guys. Um, Tony will send you guys our email addresses if you need to get in touch with us. Uh, I think she also sent around some different activities like word searches and stuff to keep you guys busy. So uh, does anyone, oh, good question. Yeah, Jazz asked if turtles live in freshwater. They do. So uh, we have different types of turtles, especially in Florida. So sea turtles obviously live in the sea, live in the ocean, right? But there are some turtles that live in freshwater and those are called aquatic turtles. So something like a soft shell turtle is an example of a freshwater turtle. Um, unfortunately, we have some invasive, some non-native um, aquatic turtles like red-eared sliders, um, but there are yellow-bellied sliders that are native to Florida that are freshwater. Um, so really quickly, I'm going to kind of just go over the differences between freshwater turtles and tortoises and sea turtles oh, tortoise. because this is this is kind of weird. Not a lot of people really know this about turtles, that they're so different from one another. Um, so sea turtles, you guys, um, sea turtles can't pull their flippers and their heads into their shell. So I know a lot of you guys might have seen some National Geographic movies or something or even cartoons where turtles go into their shells to hide, but sea turtles actually can't do that. Because their shoulders and their hips are outside of their rib cage, and again, I'm showing you the, <laughs> showing you the, uh, the shell here. So these little projections off of the spine are actually the turtle's ribs. So their shell is their backbone and their ribs all fused together in kind of this big bony plate. So because their shoulders are outside of this rib cage, they can't pull their, their flippers into their shell or their head. Um, so in order to hide, sea turtles have to hide their head underneath a rock or something in the ocean. But freshwater turtles, their skeleton is a little bit different. Their shoulders and their hips are inside of their rib cage. So instead of pretend this is a freshwater turtle shell, their shoulders are in here. So they can pull their head and flippers uh -oh, 
into their shell. So that's one difference between freshwater and uh, saltwater turtles, sea turtles. Yeah, and if you guys are interested in tortoises, I can talk go for tortoises, and um, I have an African spurred at home, and he's like 80 pounds, but we can say that for another time. Yeah. Um, but lots of differences between tortoises and turtles, but yeah. that's another day. So, um, Amika asked, how do manatees defend themselves? That's a good question. Manatees really don't defend themselves. Um, they'll protect their babies, um, but they have no defense mechanisms other than to try to flee away. Mm -hmm. But we know that they're not really fast. They can, um, if spooked is the best word, there was actually a paddle boarder. Didn't mean to run into the manatee, just paddling over long, probably didn't even see it. And it set off a chain reaction. So all these manatees went boo, 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 really quickly. Um, and they could probably knock you off your paddle board that way. So mm -hmm. um, when we say defend themselves, they're just trying to get away. They have no, um, harm in mind to you. Um, but if you do see a lot of manatees like that, possibly they're mating and a 1500 pound manatee might bump into you and, and that would, you know, not be great. So, so just another heads up on that one. Best to stay away. If you see a big group of manatees, I know it might be really tempting to go over and check them out, but it's better to watch from a distance like Samantha said mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah. Um, Are we so, till noon or 11.45? Um, I don't know. Tony, do we have time for a few more questions or do you want us to uh, maybe Wait, get them through email? Maybe one more question. Okay. That would be great. Uh, so the turtles with ears. That's yeah. Cool. So Jessica asked if turtles hear with ears. So sea turtles don't have outside don't ears know. like we have, um, but they can hear. They kind of have like internal ears. Mm -hmm. Um, so they don't they don't have traditional ears like we have on the outside of our bodies, but they do have ears on the inside of their heads. So they can hear. Um, they can hear, you know, snapping shrimp on the reef, so they know they're close to the reef that way. Um, so yes, yeah, sea turtles can hear, but it, their ears are inside of their head instead of outside like ours. Yeah. Which that's an interesting, I'm going to piggyback off that, yeah. because manatees also have tiny little ear holes, um, and that's how they communicate with their babies. So each baby and mama have their own little squeal of how they connect and uh, contact each other through the water. So if a calf is parked in a mangrove while mom goes out to eat, they can squeal back and forth. It's really high pitched. You would not expect it from such a large animal. Um, but they know that that's where they need to go. Um, so that's really exciting that they have that um, capability. And um, that's about it, though. I mean, they, they can squeal back to each other. But if you get a chance, um, there's a, it's called manatee chat and people study these bioacoustics underneath the water of how they're interacting. So look up Manatee Chat, or I'll send the link to you too, but that's really fun. Super cool. All right, cool. So if you guys have other questions, um, just email them to us, and, uh, and we'll be happy to get back to you. But thank you so much again for having us. We really had so much fun.